Hello and welcome back to the Across the Pod NFL podcast for our next team season preview. And our team we're doing today is the Chicago Bears. And with me, I've got a friend, a returning guest, back with us today is Bears fan Luke Campbell. Luke, how are you? How have things been? Da Bears. Yeah, no, I'm doing pretty good, man. Yeah, how are you? Good. Yeah, all good. Um, this backdrop is going to be not much longer. I'm making a move to Cardiff in a few weeks, so this is not. There's not much time left with this backdrop on the podcast. So, um, yeah, exciting stuff. Moving for love. Going to Cardiff. Um, yeah, do. making the move um, with with my other half. Um, yeah, looking forward to living in Cardiff Bay. Um, starting your job there as well. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's all good at the moment. Um, Man, yeah, just, just excited now for the season to begin. I'm excited. I must say, I'm excited. It feels like it's been a long time since the draft, mm. um, so I'm I'm super excited for you know just just to see some football again, but just excited for this year as well because I think this season is going to be really exciting and interesting for a change for Bears fans. I'm, I'm always optimistic every year, but this year I think I've got good reason to be. You know, absolutely. I mean, we'll get on to later on, but how often do a team get the worst? If the first overall pick in the draft, I have a seven and nine record, so. It should be an exciting time, and that really started with the off season, um, with the main ins and outs, uh, outs including Eddie Jackson, Cody Whitehair, Justin Fields. You did re-sign Jalen Johnson, Mercedes Lewis, and Josh Blackwell, but your main ins include Keenan Allen via trade, Gerald Everett, Kevin Byard, DeAndre Swift, Jonathan Owens, Dante Pettis, and Brett Ripien. And you also took Caleb Williams' first overall pick at the quarterback out of USC, as well as Roma Dunes. What Washington wide receiver ninth overall? Other ones include the likes of Kieran Amagaji, tackle out of Yale, as well as Tory Taylor in the fourth round, Hunter from Iowa, and Austin Booker in the fifth round, the, the, the defensive end from Kansas. So, overall, Felix, your take on the offseason as a whole? Well, do you know what? Transformative. Mm. And, and, you know, it's not often you use that phrase and it really rings through, but honestly, transformative, particularly in the offence. If, if you look at, you know, the kind of the weapons we've got now compared to what we had before, it, it really is night and day, isn't it? I mean, you know, you're talking about, you know, Keenan Allen coming in, a Dunsey to, to compliment DJ Moore. It's amazing, not to mention having DeAndre Swift and, and obviously Caleb at quarterback, you know, arguably the best prospect we've seen in a long, long time. Um, so I, I'm just delighted, and I'm delighted they didn't they didn't sort of decide to trade down the way. Um, I'm decided, I'm really delighted that they stuck to the guns and, and kept with Caleb because you know he was always going to be the right choice. Of course, you are, you are rocking. For those who watch on YouTube, you will see. But for those who are listening to the podcast, you are wearing a Caleb Williams jersey at the moment. Come on, come on! Had to be done. It had to be done, and I got a good deal from it actually, so it worked out quite well. Um, but that's not to say that I won't be buying more jerseys. Let's be honest here. <laughs> I'm sure. I hope my wife's not listening, but it's almost guaranteed, right? <laughs> the, 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 um, the, the credit cards get nicely nuked. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know that's the way it goes, mate. But you know, it. I see it as a long-term investment buying these shirts, probably, and that's the excuse I'm giving myself anyway, at least. Joe, I'll say this in a, in a previous episode that. You know, we we buy football shirts. Well, I've stopped buying just football shirts now. But you, know, you buy a football shirt these days, and it lasts a year. And that's it. I remember when I was a kid, getting Liverpool shirts for Christmas, it'd be a two season long investment. You know, Absolutely. getting like, my first one was my Owen jersey, and then there's Stephen Gerrard and Torres, and they all lasted two seasons. Whereas nowadays you can't do that. But the NFL jerseys can last ten years. I know players leave all the time. That's only problem. But um, in terms of the actual jersey itself, you know, you can. That can last you. That can be a team's home jersey for ten years, fifteen years. Uh, they, they they change it now and again, but you can you can get a lot more. The player stays as well for that duration, especially yeah. a quarterback. If they're a good quarterback, they will mostly stay. You got that for ten years before it changes. So um, I think yeah, probably why it cost so much money to have them. Probably why they cost over hundred quid. But um, it's expensive. But yeah. worth it. Oh. I've just retired my Jay Cutler shirt that I had for many many years. But it just literally wore out, and it, and it was getting a bit tight as well. To be fair, because I put enough, enough weight on, so um, it wasn't flattering to put it on anymore. So it, it, it retired. <laughs> Which you know what as well. Like I I'm going to Miami, and I have I had a Mike Mike Gesicki jersey, but he has left, and also the, the numbering faded. So I'm 
on a mission to get a like a stitch numbering jersey. So my plan is when I go to um I'm going to Miami this season to watch play the Cardinals and yeah. I'm gonna get a Jalen Waddle jersey and I wanna get a stitch, but I know I'm gonna be paying about minimum hundred hundred and fifty dollars, hundred two hundred dollars. I think it's gonna be that's what's gonna be, but I think if you if you can stay there for five, ten years, the jerseys don't change much, then yeah, I think that it'll be um definitely a worthwhile investment. Definitely, definitely. Uh, I, I would love Tyree Kill. I have got a um, I'm I'm, a, I'm thinking I've got a thing about numbers, and I just can't wear ten or eleven for personal reasons. So it's a shame, really, because I can't ever get a most valid jersey. But um, yeah, no. But I think General Waddle would be a great purchase. I love to get Raheem most as well, but I can't really warrant getting two jerseys. But um, yeah, I think for yourself, you never know. Wait until you're there. You might find that you'll get you'll get two jerseys without even thinking about it. Well, we'll see. Because I, I want to get the um into Miami third kit where it's like Dolphins oh, yeah. face. I yeah. love that. Um, yeah, it's kind of I'll see how I feel when I get there, kind of thing. But it's um, you know it's um there was something else to say, but I completely forgot what I was going to say about that jersey. Um, but we'll move on anyway. So um now you mentioned Caleb Williams, um of course rookie quarterback, first overall pick. Now. The thing is, we love the draft because there's a lot of parity. But if you're a quarterback, often the case is you're the best quarterback in the in the college. You go to the NFL, and automatically you go to the worst team. And therefore, a lot of times, rookie quarterbacks don't work out, and they have terrible first seasons, or they don't really make it. And the amount really of first overall picks that have been quarterbacks have actually been in the Hall of Fame. It's not many. But there's yeah. a few, you know, Troy Aikman, Peyton Manning, but there's not many. And there's a reason for that because they're going to terrible teams. That's why they're getting taken there. It's because the team's yeah. been bad enough to get that pick. But in this case with Caleb Williams, I've never seen a first overall pick go to a 7-9 and nine team with the weapons he has. You have Keenan Allen, Cole Komet, DJ Moore, oh, know, yeah. Rondre Swift in the backfield. Khalil Herbert, I think, is underrated. Yeah. So, you know, we give rookies sort of passes and give them like, you know, let off if they have a bad rookie first season because of the situation. I mean, but is this sort of an except? Does Caleb Williams have much of an excuse? If, if he performs really badly in his first season with the team he's got around him and do you think he's got any excuse if he isn't to um, perform year one? It, do you know what? It's it's very difficult because you can never really tell if a QB is going to be properly NFL ready until they until they see you know the defensive ends coming after them and stuff like that. You, you can never really tell how they're going to cope with the rigors of it. And and obviously, you know, one of the biggest challenges they have is reading defenses, um, and and it's you know it's not easy. Um, but I I do think that. He's, he's well set up for success, let's put it that way. And I think he's arguably the best set up quarterback and, and certainly the best set up number one pick um, for success that, that any team's really had in recent times. I can't think of anyone who's been better set up, really. Um, so, so really, you know, I think everyone has kind of high expectations. But to, to, to be honest, I, I, I think that he'll also, he does have a bit of a hall pass in the sense that. If it, if it doesn't quite go to plan in season one, you know, people will be disappointed, sure, but they, they recognise that it's not always just about the first season, it's about the long term. So there's kind of a mix of things. But I, I mean, to be honest, I'm expecting a little bit of ups and downs because that's what happens with rookie QBs. But I think the ups will be higher than the downs themselves, if you see what I mean, are considerably higher and the downs will be fairly shallow is what I'm expecting. So, you, you know, you're, you're, you're probably looking at more more positive stuff over the piece um and, and you know i think um or you know maybe that again is my eternal optimist playing here i don't know um but I, i'm excited about it i must say really excited i'm excited to see him in person when, when we go we go for the london game um and i'm trying to persuade my wife to let me go to chicago at some point this season so we'll see what happens oh you, you've got to go right you've got to go to chicago at some point well, I did it last year, and I was there for the Broncos game, which was amazing for three quarters and terrible. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, you know, it, it was and it was an amazing experience. I was right in the end zone. It was, you know, people were fantastic. Um, but again, you know, we, we we needed more consistency. I think we'll have that this year. That, that's what I feel. And I think he, you think he's surely going to be the guy that finally breaks the long term hoodoo of. Never having a best callback with four thousand yards or more passing, I think there's surely he's the guy that's going to finally do that for the Bears. 
I would think so. I would think so. He's got enough talent, and and everyone that I've spoken to, and you know, has said that he really has got that talent, and and you know, from day one, um, to be the you know the top QB that we we all hope he's going to be, um, you know. So I I, I think the chances are pretty positive of him doing that. To be honest with you, you know, I would I would say that it's more likely than not, and I think that's a really good feeling to have at the start of the season, and you know, I, I hope that it kind of backs that up, but I, I just feel good about it, you know, overall. And what's your take on his personality? It, it gets mixed opinions, his personality. There's um, people like myself who think he's quite refreshing and quite like his personality. Yeah. And other, other, other people are saying that he's too cocky and he's acting like he's um, you know, Tom Brady. I think I do get the point about the fact that he's already asking for money and all that kind of stuff. But mm-hmm. I, I think personally he's just something that, I think some teams need. He's refreshing. He's out there. He's very marketable as well. So I think uh, I'm I'm all in on Caleb. But what's your take on the personality? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of a, a lot of snarking before the draft that he was some sort of prima donna and stuff like that. But the, the reality is, when you're you, you know, especially when you're the number one uh, pick, you've got to be a leader, right? And you've got to set the example, and you've got to you know you've got to lead from the front. And I think he shows all those qualities. And I think even on draft day. Uh, himself it was it was really refreshing and everything I've seen so far has been refreshing and it feels like he's changing the mode that you know you know the kind of model a little bit for the franchise QB and I, I really like that I think that's great you know even the claw you know the bear claw was brilliant it was just little things like that that just make a difference and and he already seems to have really good chemistry with the guys in his team and that you can't buy that sort of stuff you know so I I, I think he's got a great personality I think he's He's a natural leader of, of you know, the, the team and, and you can see it all over. You know, you can see how people gravitate towards him and stuff. And it's not just because of, you know, whatever number one pick. I think it's just his natural personality. And and it's easy to snark about it. But honestly, I, I think he's, he's just got the right personal qualities as well as, you know, all the rest of it. You know, and you can see that for, for, for me, no doubt. Yeah, I can't help but agree with you on that one. Now, we mentioned... Caleb Williams getting a sort of get out of jail free card. I think one guy who hasn't got that is your head coach Matt Eberflus. Yes. I think it was a surprise to myself and a lot of people that he actually kept this job in the first place. Uh, so, yeah. You know, we don't just talk about Caleb Williams getting all these new weapons and you know getting in Keenan Allen and DeAndre Swift and Kevin Byard. Mm-hmm. The team's got no excuses to go at least eight, nine wins or more and make the playoffs. Um, now, do you, for you, I mean, I think he's as well, but do you think he is on? Of all the head coaches in the NFL, the hottest of seats. To an extent, um, to an extent, but I think that uh, what's really earned him his sort of, you know, I, I guess a, a, what you might call a, a reprieve. I don't know what you would call it, but the fact that he turned that defense around and, and really, you know, turned them into a, a proper top ten unit. And I think you're still going to see that this year. There's still some holes in the defense side of things, but. You know, he's got them organised. He, he, he kind of knows what he wants to achieve. The numbers were great towards the end of last season. Um, but I do think he is under a bit of pressure. I mean, you know, it, every coach is. But I think, you know, the expectation of having the number one pick and having a, a, a pretty good draft by all accounts, uh, that, that will put pressure on him. And, and I think if they, you know, for instance, if they went like zero and four or something, I hope not because that would be awful. Okay. Um then the pressure would definitely be on him. But I, I don't see that happening. I, I, I do genuinely see quite a successful season. Um, I think they've got all the, the kind of right parts and everything seems to be moving in the right direction. And and I, and, I, and actually, I like Iberflus as a coach. I think he's I think he's a good guy. And everything I've heard about him is that he's a, he's a really good coach and a really good guy as well. So, uh, you know, I, I certainly have my fingers crossed for him. You know, I, I don't want to see any changes. I want to see stability from now on. Yeah, I mean, there's, I think one thing I, I like to go towards is maybe Todd Bowles because he was of similar sort of talk about it um, either last year or year before mm. when people were saying he's not a very good head coach and he's a good DC. Mm. But you know, he's won him, what, two or three now back to back, or it might be just one or two back to back division titles. And it, really, there's no real talk of any sort of, um, sort of hot seat for him because he did so well with Baker Mayfield last year. So, I think Iberflus, if he goes nine and nine and eight or 
you make the playoffs, I think that's first of all, it's progress. I think that also me that'll keep him the job. But I do feel like if it's you know missing the playoffs and get seven wins or less and it's not very good to watch, I do think that his time's up. He's been there what three or four years now, um, and he's not really done it yet. So I feel like I feel like if he can't do it with the first overall pick, with all these players he's brought in, as well as DJ Moore, who's already there, who he brought yeah. in before, I, I think he might be on borrowed time. But I think if the season goes well, then he is definitely not on the hot seat. Absolutely. Mm. Um, but we are here to our final segment, which is going to be our win-loss tie section. So for yeah. those listening at home who aren't familiar with the progress, with, with the format, I should say, each fan who comes on predicts their team's record by going through each game and answering with a Win lost tie section. So, Luke, you came on last year. I'm just going to find your predictions from last year. Was it too early for me to just say we're going to win every game and you know keep it nice and short? Is, it, is that too early yet, or is it? it no, too- it's um, <laughs> of all the combo, be the optimism of all optimisms. That will be that will be. Um... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, so let's dig out the, the last year's record and we can have a bit of yeah, a laugh I, and punch myself in the face or something. So I'm too optimistic, I think. That's probably a good good point to start. <laughs> I mean, I stupidly didn't get it prepared. I normally have all the, the, the record there prepared, but I've actually stupidly forgotten to um, do that this time for this episode. So I've just... Word is just loading up. Let me try and find the um, website there. So season previews, here we are. So I was that year, off, actually, to be honest, when I think about it. You got, seven wins, you got seven wins last year. On the record, you predicted your team to get, can you guess? I think maybe nine, I said, or eight. Yeah, it was nine and eight. So you, you weren't that far nine. off. You weren't that, that far off. That way. Really? Not really. Given my usual optimism, that was not bad, actually. That's not a bad result. I, you know, I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll probably stop punching myself in the face now because that's not bad. You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there's definitely worse <laughs> than that this season, I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, so, week one, you are Soldier Field taking on the Titans. Win, loss, or tie? Win. Let's do this. So... Week two uh, is a road game against the Houston Texans. Ooh, that's a tough one because they're a good team. Mm, I'm going to say win, though. I'm still going to go for it. I'm still going to say we're going to win that one. Let's do this. Yeah. So week three is a road game again, but this time against the Indianapolis Colts. Oh, that's a tough one on the road. <sighs> We'll probably lose that one, so we'll start two and one or something like that, I think. Okay, so you got back to back home games. Your first one is against the Los Angeles Rams. Tough one, but I think we win it. I'm, okay. I'm so optimistic, by the way. Honestly, it's going to be ridiculous. <laughs> Honestly, people will laugh at me in the street and stuff. Well, I'm sure you'll get even more confident now in week five. You take on the Panthers at home. That's a win as well. Okay, now. Next up is in London. Um, obviously, you're going to the game. I'm sure yeah. you're going to the game. And obviously, I'm hoping we can once again um, go out for a stake like last year. Definitely. Definitely. Oh. I think it's locked in the calendar already, mate. So, yeah. Uh, have, and steak has to be happen, happen, right? <laughs> what was that, sorry? Steak has to happen, right? I mean, that's Yeah, just... absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it was. Um, I've never seen a steak that expensive before, but that's my um, my old, you know, living at home with my parents. <laughs> <and> <laughs> It was nice. It was nice. I love the um the chips were amazing. So yeah, I, I'd love to go back to that place again. That was um that was really nice. It was good actually, wasn't it? It was a nice place yeah. actually, I must say, and pretty central and stuff, and uh, surprisingly not completely freezing outside, which I was quite surprised about to be honest with you. But uh, it all worked out actually, so it was good. It was good fun. Great to see you as always, but uh, yeah. you know, it was so much fun, a good laugh that night. Yeah, it was our first time meeting in person with me. We had all these Zoom calls before. <laughs> It was obviously the podcast we used to do together, the football podcast. Yep. It was nice seeing you and Steve just actually in person, not just mm-hmm. on a on a laptop. Mm-hmm. And we still took the mic out of Steve most of it. So, oh yeah, you know, yeah, that's absolutely. standard. And Chris. <laughs> oh, it's um, yeah, it was good. No, I, I loved how sent. Yeah, I think what you said, how central it was to everything. I mean, it was very awesome. near the hippodrome. It was sort of. Just yeah, it was perfect for us. To walk yeah. Into, yeah. It was, yeah, and I definitely go there again. And um, yeah. obviously, 
obviously your friend who wasn't there was watching his team play, but of course, you're seeing your team play this year in person in London. Um, you're taking on the Jags. Um, what's your predictions about that? What's your thoughts about that game? Oh, now, do you know, the London games are always really hard because there is a, there's always a blowout one side or the other. Um, I really want to say win. I really, really want to say win. But I think we might lose that one. And I don't know why, but I think we might. I think I just think it, it might, we might not travel that well. I have a horrible feeling that we won't travel that well when we go to London. Well, the last time you were in London, I was there for it against the Raiders. Um, you did lose to the Raiders. And yes. I don't recall before my time, really, whether you beat the Buccaneers in 2010 or not. Did you win that game? I was at that game, and I think we beat them, actually. But we lost to the Raiders, and that was really disappointing. Mm. I was so gutted about the Raiders game. And I think I have a feeling the Jags game will be the same, that we just don't travel that well and, you know, we, we, we lose it. Which will be a pity, but that's the way it goes. I think as well, you got to look at what happened last year, the same sort of thing, where the Jags will be there the week before as well. So they're playing in week five. Um, mm. Oh, no, wait, no, they're, they're playing... Are they no, playing the third or third game? I can't remember whether they're playing... Um, I know obviously there's um I've got a feeling actually they might be playing the game after they play you. Uh, yeah, because it's a Jets before because I'm going I'm gonna to go to that one as well, actually. Oh, of course, yeah, back back and then you was back back top them. I just trying to think, yeah, that probably wasn't the Jags, was it? Yeah, so um yeah, you, you that you might win that one. I thought if you're if you're playing the Jags in their second game in London, I think that's a lot for you, for you to lose that game. But I think playing them first, you might have a chance. But I think as well, they're used to being, they play in London every year, they're used to it. I, I think that that could be also a factor. Neutral venue, it's no, every jersey on display of every team there. It's not really, it's down as a home game, but it's not really a home advantage for you because um, you'll be playing against a team that is so used to playing in London. So, uh, yeah, I think that might be one of the locks of the season for you to lose that game. And certainly the Patriots the following week will be even more of a lock to lose that game. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I, I think it's interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, like I said, it's uh, it's all about the, the travelling and, and, and all that sort of stuff. And it, it can really be a problem, you know, for, for teams and how they deal with that. And and I don't, you know, I, I th and, and the thing is, you can't really predict it either because some teams do it, they come in quickly. But I, I sort of think that teams that come in last minute and try and do it, you know, or like they fly in the Thursday or something and think, oh, we can just do it in a few days. It's not doing transatlantic travel is not the same as flying across the US, and and so you you, you the players need time to you know to um, acclimatize themselves and get over the jet lag and stuff. Um, so you know, I I, I do th I do worry about it to be honest. I really do. Yeah, I mean, you got it's a whole difference between flying in America. What maximum? What three hours? time difference between the west coast and the east coast that's and right. yeah um, that's a whole difference between that and seven eight nine hours or maybe maybe five hours jet lag i think it's, it's a big yeah. difference um yeah. but yeah i do feel like it's you know it's all always good vibes in london i always love the atmosphere there but i do feel like i don't know why more teams just don't travel after the last game i don't know why more teams just don't head straight to london after they play a game I don't know why they can't just get a hotel for the entire week. I don't know why. I don't know why these teams do it so last minute. They should all do it. I reckon Sunday of the game, you fly. I reckon you fly actually from your gate where you play your game on that Sunday. Yeah, yeah. 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 because it'll give you more time to explore. The players would love it more because the players would get to explore London. Because most yeah. players get there, they don't really see London. They get yeah. there, they train, they play, they go home. I think yeah. the players would be more for it. There'd be less jet lag. There'd be more time. They have, have more time to acclimatize to their Exactly. Landings and I think all around, I think teams should always do that. But there's obviously a reason why they don't do it, and there's obviously there's, there's signs behind it. But yeah, I think I would certainly, if I was their owner or head coach, I would certainly look at doing that. I mean, the interesting thing about that is, I would have thought the science would be better for them to travel immediately and then use like the rest day to combine getting over the game itself and also, you know, just kind of you know giving the players some rest to. to to you know climatize themselves and then get into it and i would have thought that that would make better sense you know but then i'm not you know i'm not a physical scientist or anything like that so I, you know but then it just sure? <laughs> it feels like it's no definitely not not these days anyway um but you know it just feels like it makes better sense but who knows every team's got their own rationale behind it and and you know it'll be interesting to see what the bears do this year 
yeah, of course, I think the only thing you've got in that thing is what if a player has to go to hospital or has like a really serious mm-hmm. injury, them getting on a flight, it's a whole different thing. But it's um, difficult. Well, I love as well. I know they would never do it, but imagine you go to you're in Gatwick or Heathrow Airport and all whatever airport they're playing in America in, and you see them yeah. all they stay in their gear, they're all wearing the pads on their flights. Can you imagine that? Like just fucking up at like uh, I don't know, um Chicago Fort Worth Airport or something yeah. like that, and it's like you know, you've got all the players just there in their gear. I remember Jack Lynch yeah. was there partying after the Champions League final win in his full gear. I'm wondering, can you imagine if they just went straight to the airport, all sweaty, all muddy, all in their, all in their gear, trying to get on a flight? <laughs> yeah. Well, you've got to think that they're all going to be in business class anyway. So, right? So it won't particularly matter too much, I don't suppose. Um, but, you know, there would be a queue for the shower at the end of the flight, I would imagine, because I can't imagine it would be a pretty flight at the end of it. Oh no! Imagine, imagine being next to um, oh. next one of the players, and you're not a, not a player, and it just smell of sweat. I, I can't be, be in any plane. <laughs> Wouldn't be good at all. No, definitely not. <laughs> uh, so week seven is a bye week, and then week eight, you're taking on the Washington Commanders uh, on the road. Oh, now that is a tricky one because by that point they've settled in their new QB, and they're you know they they're sort of part of the way through their rebuild. I think that's one we could easily lose, actually. I think we could easily lose that on the road. Okay. Um, so week nine, you're on the road again, this time against the Arizona Cardinals. I'm going to take us to win that one. Tricky game, but I'm I'm taking us to, you know, potentially win it. Okay, so week 10 is November the 10th. So it'll be your first home game since, or the home game on American soil, since October 6th, so you've had a long time away from Soldier Field, yep. but you're back taking on a team who's featuring next on this podcast, the New England Patriots at Soldier Field. We're going to win that one. Yeah, that is fair. Yep. I think they're going to be easy one of the worst teams this year. I don't see them oh, I think doing too. anything. Yeah. Um, you've actually got three straight home games now. So you had the first one against the Patriots. Next one up is Week 11. Your favourite team, the Green Bay Packers. Oh, no. That it's going to be difficult. Um, I think I want to say we win this. I really, really want to say more than anything that we win this with home advantage. And in fact, I'm going to say we win it because I do think that we've got the offensive weapons these days. And I think home field advantage counts for a bit more these days. And, and they don't have Aaron anymore. And, you know, who's that guy, Jordan Love? I don't care. <laughs> well, I don't know Jordan Love. Um... Slandering on the a big love fan, so um, yeah, no, that's um, but I thought you'd go for the loss then. You went for the audible last minute and changed to a win. I was convinced I you a loss then, mm, yeah. No, I threw an audible in a the play there just to keep you going. <laughs> um, we have another NFC North team, um, against the Vikings at home. Mm, I actually think we win that as well. I don't yes. think the points are going to be as good this year. I think it'll be quite a, a high scoring game, actually, because they, you know, they they will they've got a lot of good weapons and it'll be interesting to see, you know, what happens. But I, I do think that we win that, but I think it might be quite close. And the same with the, the Packers game. I think they're both going to be very close. Um, because I think our division is going to be very competitive this year. You know, uh, I love I love the North divisions. I do. I love <laughs> my favorite division is the NC North. I, I love it, but I love the, the history of Lambeau Field. I love the skull chant of the Vikings. I, I yeah. love Bears. I've said, said for years, Bears my favourite NFC team. And, you know, yeah. um, and as well, um, the fourth team is Detroit Lions. I, I love their their sort of mentality and, and dog mentality. They never won a Super Bowl before. I love that whole thing. And then the AFC North, I love the hard nosed nature of it. I love the, the bruised nature of Pittsburgh and the black and black and yellow. I love the, you know, the, the tiger part of the Bengal Stadium. And I, I love the, Uniform surprising of the Browns. I, I like yeah. their. I, I love Draft Day as well. The film. Yeah. And then, um, Baltimore Ravens. They're probably the weak link, but they got Derrick Henry now, who I yeah. love as a player. So yeah, I we always love watching North, particularly the NFC North. But I think both North divisions this year, I'm, I'm gonna have a close eye on because they're always yeah. ones that yeah. really, really fascinating. A lot of history behind those divisions. Um, yeah. Week 13, you're back on the road uh, against the Detroit Lions. Oh, I think we lose that one. I think they're they're a good good team, and uh, on the road is is always hard against them. 
Uh, interestingly, a lot of my family in the US are Lions fans, actually. Um, so they did actually buy me a Monsters of the Midway mug when they came to, to visit recently, which was great. Um, but I think it was given through gritted teeth because they're all Lions fans. And the trainer said, well, why, why can't you support the Lions? And I said, well, if you told me sooner, I might have changed my mind. But by that <laughs> point, I had already, the, the Bears had chosen me. So I just said, yeah. well, you know, quite like the Lions, don't mind them too much as divisional rivals, but I'm a Bears fan. That's the way it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I never condone changing teams. I think I, 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 w- I wouldn't have, I'm not against if you could change teams from the Browns with the whole Watson situation, but I think there's normally, I think unless you've got a kid who plays for a team, I think there's very little room for, for me for changing teams to support. I, I don't think that's just not how life works. You can't just change teams and one team plays well mm-hmm. and then you say, and your team's playing bad. You change, I, I don't agree with that. I think once you choose a team, I think as soon as you bought a hat or a jersey from that team and, and you say, and you're saying you're a fan of that team, I think that's it then. I don't think you can change. Uh, unless you've got a valid reason, which there aren't many I would accept. Um, well, you go from one road game to the NFC Championship losers to a road game against the NFC Championship winners in the 49ers in Week 14, win loss or tie. We're going to lose that. They are just too good. They are too good. And, and, you know, I'd love to say we're going to beat them, but we're not We're not there yet. They, they are just too good on both sides. You know, yeah. it's just the way it is. I think... We talk, we did. We recorded part one before this episode, and recording part two. They have to record this episode, uh, but I think they're definitely in their sort of their last band sort of era with the age of some of their players. So I think they'll be eager to try and win it this year. And I think as long as the Chiefs aren't there, I think they might they might win it. Um, but we will talk about it more in the course in our season preview episode with myself, yourself, and Steve. And we'll do that a week before the season starts. Uh, for the fourth time in a row we're doing this now. Um, we've all won one each time. We've all won the predictions each time. So, yeah, that'll come week before the season starts. We'll do our usual ones like division winners, award winners, and then conference winners, Super Bowl winners, all that stuff. So keep an eye out for that later on in the off-season, uh, about a week before the season starts. That'll be coming out. Um, so week 15 is a road game, and you're once again playing the Vikings. <sighs> I want to say we win that because I, I do think the Vikings, again, are probably not going to be as good this year. I think, you know, I, I do think that um, I just think they're going to miss Cousins too much this year. And I, I don't think that, you know, the guy they've drafted is going to be as good immediately. He might come good, but I think he's, you know, he's, he was probably drafted higher than he, he maybe should have been, I think. But yeah. Let's see. Let's see what happens. It, it's a really one that I think he's the one that I think of all the quarterbacks intrigue you the most. Because I think on yeah. the one hand you've got oh yeah he 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 just had the best team possible at Michigan and but then you know he won games and that's the most important thing and that's what Tom Tom Brady did at Michigan as well. He won games and he wasn't seen as a high draft pick. So right. um, for me, I and the thing on the, on the other hand as well, he could just be a system quarterback and I think that. You got you got Jefferson there. I think that could be a thing that obviously will help him. Yes, better because you've got good weapons there. But at the same time, I just don't think I do think the defense will carry them. I think more than their offense at times. So I'm yeah. a big going forward Homer, but I, I don't think they've got enough. Um, I, I don't know whether he'll be. I don't know whether he'll be good or not. I think he's one. Really, you, you won't know until he plays in the field. And I think he could be one where it takes him a year or two to work it out, or it could be very lights out straight away or we could just be completely a bust so um that's one we'll have to wait and see um i agree on that one totally yeah i i think it's he's a really intriguing callback and i think he's mm-hmm. the one that i kind of want to see the most and see how he does mm-hmm. um week 16 is the game just before christmas if you take on the detroit lions at home <sighs> I think we're going to lose that. I just, I, I don't know why, but I just think the Lions are a good, good team and it. it's going to be a struggle against them. That they've got weapons and, and you know, they're, they're settled. The, the, you know, yeah, it's going to be tough. I think we we'll lose that. I don't know whether you saw a video that came on on socials. There was a, I can't think of they were playing in practice where I'm on the Ransom Brown got involved in a scuffle. And the thing that the biggest takeaway from that was the fact that no Lions players came to um, help him out. There was about a melee of 
Mm. I think the team was not they were playing against in a training session. Mm. Mm. And there's, there's been rumours of um, a bit of unrest around the contract he received. And That's interesting. There's, yeah. um, obviously, their team that historically has not won. And he's, there's, there's always that potential that they could just... It could be a one-season thing. I don't think it will be. I think they're they're such a good team all round. But yeah, that definitely intrigued me. That um, you know, yeah. with the, with the receiver stuff going on, and you know, with all the um, you know, tension around him on that Netflix documentary, mm. and then the contract. There's um, you could easily see it as that. But I don't think there's a. I think the sort of spirit inside that locker room, the sort of the characters they got in that building. I don't think that would happen. But yeah. I think. Team starts winning games, more expectation goes down them, and I think that could cause more tension. But we'll wait and see. I hope I hope, I hope they do well, but that could be a worrying sign. Um, week seventeen is Boxing Day, seven fifteen p.m. Eastern, which is going to mean that it's going to be about one fifteen p.m. in the UK on the twenty seventh, which will be the prime video game. Um, so yeah, I don't know whether you see what your plans are around Christmas time, Luke, but will you be staying up for that one around Christmas time? I, I I suspect I may be, um, you know, I, I think I'll probably start work a little bit later, uh, but I, I think there's a good chance I'll stay up and watch that game, to be honest. So yeah, yeah I think I don't know what day that is of the of the year. The Boxing Day is going to be on the Thursday, so yeah, it will be a Friday morning. I'm gonna have to look into that as well about what I'm doing about work. Uh, might have to be um, my usual game pass, uh, watching the morning, not knowing the results. Um, I- that might be my plan as well. You know, I'll, I might try and stay up, but I suspect I, I it depends how tired I am as well, of course. But uh, let, let's yeah. see what happens. Uh, <laughs> but it is again Seattle Seahawks at Soldier Field, win, loss, or tie. I think we win that one as well, actually. Okay, so it means you're going to week 18, 10 and 6, heading to Lambeau Field. Oh. Now that. Lambeau Field has historically been bad for us, historically, and and I actually think we'll lose that because I I, I do think that, um, if you know for the the same reasons as before, we're we're looking really good, but we're not quite the finished article, and and I think winning at Lambeau Field might just be beyond us. I hope not, but I've got to be realistic. So, first time, right? First time, can't believe it. <laughs> 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 well, you, do, you do finish ten and six, which means you would think, especially in the NFC, that get you get you in the playoffs. I think it does. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it would. And if you did that, um, how far do you think you'd go in the playoffs? Well, I mean, it, it, it is interesting. I would like to think that we would we would we would not be one and done. You know, I would like to think that that we would you know at, at least progress from you know. I'm assuming we'll get in the wild card round. Is what my, my assumption is. I don't think we'll win the NFC North, so I think we're likely to be in the wild card round. I think if we can progress from the wild card round, I would be happy with that with the first season of Caleb. And anything on top of that is really a bonus, to be honest. You know, I think at that stage it becomes a bit of a turkey shoot because it depends on who gets through and what injuries are looking like and stuff like that. So you you just don't know, but I, I would. That's my hope anyway, at least. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, honestly, if we get to the playoffs, I'm going to be the most excited man in the history of the world. So, uh, you know, anything else on top of that will just be a complete bonus. Yeah, I'm kind of the same mentality as you. The fact that I've never seen us win a playoff game. Being a fan of 14 years yeah. now, I've seen us play yeah. in just three playoff games. We've yeah. lost every time. So, me, if we can win a playoff game, that will be enough. And anything more for me will be a bonus as well. Now, I want to touch on your schedule as well, just quickly, because it's, I've never seen such a weird schedule. You play no division rival until week 11. You've weird. got um, no no home game on American soil from week 5 to week 10. Mm. And then uh, oh, in, from weeks 11 to 18, you only play two non-division division rivals. I've never seen a schedule like it. And then you've got three home games as well across November. Uh, yeah. not a single, or you've got one road game in November. Yeah. After I think it's a really weird and like topsy turvy schedule. I think I don't know what they're doing at the schedule making department, but yeah, that I that sort of threw me off. Then I was like, that's actually a really weird schedule because normally it, you get at least one division rival in the first first half of the season. Well, in a funny way, it's really favourable for us um, because you you probably don't want to be facing divisional rivals early when you're betting in a new QB. So in actual fact, I think it's 
as favourable as we could have asked for in that sense. Um, because you you know you know I think divisional rivals and divisional games are a very different beast to the rest of the games. You know, as you know, it's it, it, there's more intensity and stuff like that. Um, so so I, th- I do actually think in a funny way it kind of really works for us in, in terms of betting in Caleb and the rest of the the, the guys on the offense and defense. Um, so so I'm actually not unhappy about it, but I totally agree with you. It's like really weird, and you know not not facing a divisional rival till you know week 11 is it's crazy it really is but i'm not complaining yeah. so don't change it anyone <laughs> <laughs> well for those wondering i've not talking of don't change it i've not changed teams it's actually it's a chicago cubs hat i realize yeah. it looks very similar to the bears logos i'm just trying oh. to put it out there for those watching on youtube i am wearing a cubs hat not a bears hat so i wouldn't change teams to the world even though I, I love the bears and they're my sort of my soft spot team uh, my nfc team um, yeah, I, I don't um, ever condone changing teams. Yeah, this is a Cubs. This, but my baseball team is the Cubs. That's why I'm wearing the hat. Um, so yeah, that that is why. So just want so to you know, outside. So you say you, what you really need is a cold weather team and a, a warm weather team. That's what you need, right? Yeah, uh, you, yeah you can all go see both teams play, and you can pack for all all seasons. You, you know, you've exactly. got your your exactly. week in the sun, your week in the cold. Exactly. So you know, maybe that's a, maybe that's a thing that you have, like, or or you could have an NFC team and an AFC team. Yeah, uh, I mean, I always say that the team I root for in the NFC. My dream Super Bowl. We did a dream Super Bowl episode a few months ago now with Aaron Fletcher from uh, Secret Work, and mm. my matchup was Dolphins Bears because I think if there's one team I'm happy to lose to, it is the Bears because they are my favorite NFC team. I kind of the team uh, Dolphins weren't playing in the, in the playoffs. I'd be rooting for the Bears. But I'm not going to sit here and buy a jersey. I, I, I don't do that. But, um, yeah, I, I like the Bears. I, I love Soldier Field. I think I said before on this podcast, if I'd watched the NFL before choosing a team, it would have, would, it would have been the uh, Bears, no doubt. But I had my team set before I watched the game because of Madden. So, um, awesome. yeah, the shout-out for the Bears. I always like you to do well. And I never really want to root against you. And I don't think I could be a fan because I, I don't think I could hate the Packers. I don't think I could hate the Vikings or the Lions. So, I think... I can easily hate the Bills and the Jets and Patriots, but I just don't think I can. I can ever really truly hate those three teams. So, um, yeah, maybe if I'm playing them twice a year, maybe I'll think differently. But um, yeah, that's. I think that's the thing, though. When you, you know, when you've got like the. I mean, I'll probably be hoarse when I see you because I'll have gone the week before to just to boo Aaron Rodgers and say <laughs> that whole game. Uh, not that I hold a grudge or anything, of course. No, not, not at all. <laughs> not much. Uh, let me tell you, I'm bringing a loudspeaker and everything every time he. <laughs> shouts a snap you suck and stuff like that you know um again not because i'm bitter just because i don't like the guy that's it simple as that you know but, and all seriousness it's true though if you play teams twice and you get to know them and stuff like that and that rivalry it does build up and there's no question you know from that side of things that you know i, I could see you know why there is that kind of enmity there and and you know the same for the you know your division as well it, it must have been really grating to see you know some of the the things happening when you couldn't do much about it either. Do you know what I mean? So uh, that's the you... thing because um really the Patriots, we've never really um certainly when they were on their top, we were never really anywhere close to competing. And that's why really I find them the least to hate out of three. The Jets I just hate they're the Jets. But uh, but the Bills for me are the one. They're the better one. Actually maybe the Pats more than the Jets because they won all the time. But I yeah. think the, the Bills, because I've been a fan fourteen years Every year has been losing seasons, whereas Tough. two years we've had playoff appearances and we've gone for divisions. Uh, the Bills have stopped this. So I think that's why, as much as I love the fans, and I've got a lot to thank Bills fans for my, my, when I was travelling in America. Uh, yeah. I, I just, I think, that as a team, it broke my heart a lot more than oh, yeah. Yeah, easily. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I've never seen this. I, I'm sure if we'd won the division... I'd have seen us win a playoff game. I'd have backed us at home to be, at least win one of those two games, whoever we played that day. So, yeah, for me, the Bills will always be until something changes. I think the Bills will always be my number one most, most disliked team in the NFL. And yep. I think uh, I actually like Josh Allen. I, I, I loved watching the Jim Kelly um, football life. I think that's one of my favourite ever football mm-hmm. life. It's really, it's really touching and moving with all yep. the stuff that happened to him. Uh, but, yeah, I kind of which I was old enough to really see the losses. I reckon I've been amazing to watch both the Patriots losing to David Tyree's helmet catch and the wide right. I love to have been old enough to um, to watch those games. 
quite frankly, yeah. that that would have been amazing. Um, yeah. But we will end the podcast here. So uh, that has been our 2024 Chicago Bears season preview. So once again, huge thanks to Luke for coming on the show. Thanks, mate. Thank you for having me. It's been a lot of fun. As always, I always love doing a yeah. podcast with you. So it's, it's always a lot of fun. Uh, really yeah. appreciate it, mate. Thanks so much. I'm looking forward to, yeah, meeting you again in person in London. And, of course, bringing you our season preview episode, which is going to be uh, our season predictions, I should say, episode uh, with Steve. That will come at it before a week before the season starts. So keep an eye out for that one. But in the meantime, we're going to go to our next season preview, which is going to be Deadly New England Patriots. We'll see you there.